forgot I got my, my chain and I'm attached. Your name is? Luis. Luis? I'm Carl. Frank, what I'm going to do is go through a lot of the different things that, that I tend to like with this. Uh, and uh, primarily what I use it for is a lot of different things. So some of the stuff, my, my market is, is mainly refractive. So um, what I'm trying to do is show you how I can use all these different instrumentations in a refractive market. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is you know, the OPD and kind of all-in-one. And what I like about the all-in-one is it gives me so many, I, it's my screening exam. So all I do is basically take a picture. I can get my pupils, my case, but what I really like about it is I can get my internal astigmatism. So if I'm going to go do uh, an astigmatic lens or I'm going to do a crystal lens or I'm going to do something inside the eye, I want to know what's in, in internal because all I want to do is wa wa work on the cornea. Same thing goes if I want to look at my wavefront error, I want to know where it is. If it's in the lens, I don't want to treat it. So a lot of times I use this as a screening, and then maybe I'll use, I've got uh, a VizX, a wave light, I've got a bunch of different types of lasers too, that I'll use this as a screening and then say, God, I can't use that because uh, a custom treatment, because they got a lot of lenticular aberration. And this is really nice. It's right there on the machine, and you can pop it up and print it. And what it'll do is it'll give you a point spread function and say to the patient that's complaining postoperatively, you know, you ever look at a, a point source of light, that's what you're going to see. And they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my, that's my comet. That's what I'm talking about. So you have now a visual sign and you have a RMS greater than 0 0.35, 0 0.4, and you can go ahead and treat it. And you're more likely to say, I want to treat it. Now, um, primarily... You know, we can look at now what's on the cornea in terms of the varying options. We can look at modulation transfer functions too. And what we, what we have now is a way to assess visual acuity, potential visual acuity and outcomes. But we can also start looking at spherical aberration and picking lens like an aspheric and the type of aspheric and which aspheric you want to use. Visual acuity charts, I'm using these now to show a patient, you know, this is what you see now if we did a enhancement, this is what you would see later. Or, and you can, you can show them how they've improved or how they've gotten better. They can say, no, that's what I see when I'm looking at night at a sign. Now, the one thing that we're starting to do and that we're not quite there yet is marry these two together. So, in other words, we've got the way to measure axial length, anterior chamber depth, you know, and lens thickness. We've got the Ks, the sphere collaboration. Marry them together, and we got the IO, IO, IOL station, and then put that with a holiday IOL consultant, and we're going to be getting better packages. So it's going to give you much more than IOL master in one reading. So, you know, it's going to be a cataract summary printout. It's actually going to tell you which of the available lenses would be most appropriate for this person's cornea as well. And, and it's kind of an easy guide for ILL calculations. It's an easy way to look at it, take a picture. It's a reproducible picture and a way in which to, to, to treat these patients and follow it up. Now, the other thing that I've got too is a Magellan. And I use my Magellan um, a little bit different. I've got now like 14 different topographers uh, that we use in the clinic, but this is my second line screening information so a lot of times people get an OPD we'll look at that we'll see where they're at and then if if something looks abnormal this one's a lot more sensitive and we can use the navigator to tell us what's regular or not a lot of times if I have an irregular cornea I'll use this average corneal power because it averages the central cornea what the visual axis is and basically that I'll put in a in a uh, you know guy that's got a graft or a guy that's got some kind of abnormality and basically what we'll do is use that for a lens power calculation. And these are just a couple of, you know, like keratoconus, those are pretty obvious. So this is normal, this is astigmatic, keratoconus suspect, keratoconus, lucid marginal degeneration, previous graft, previous refractive surgery myopic, previous refractive surgery hyperopic, and then the other category. 
Now, a lot of people believe these are, are for cents. They're just giving you relative weight values is what they really are. And what the relative weight value is saying, okay, this guy's got a 93, you know, that, that he's got a problem. But there could be other. But, I mean, you got to put some diagnostic codes into it. And then the neat, neat thing about it is, is that if you look at these various indices, if you can't remember, oh, darn, I don't remember what KPI stands for, you put your mouse right there, and I can't do it on this, but you put your mouse right there, and it tells you the study, and it tells you what it, what it means. And then here's a graph. Here's Intax. This is actually uh, uh, Brian, who was just standing there, over here. So in terms of refractive surgery, I use it to measure you know, what I've got and measure my difference, look at my calculated outcomes. There's a lot of different maps that you can look at in terms of the big picture. This is what I really like about the machine, though, is if I take a picture, how do I know if it's a good picture? So what we can look at is this little box right here. So if somebody comes into my lane and they've got maps, and they look like this, I can go and look at Leanne or I can go back and look at Tara or whoever and say, you guys need to go retake it because it doesn't count. It's a bad picture. So here's a bad offset versus a good offset. So this person's just not looking. And you see all the red. Yellow's kind of like, okay, you may want to rethink it. But, but this is just obviously somebody that wasn't looking where they're supposed to be looking. And here are them two seconds later when they're looking where they're supposed to be, bad offset, good offset, everything's green, and it's a real simple way to look and make sure everything looks good. And you can also look at the actual raw data. So if you want to see what's being interpolated into the computer, you can, you can modify those rings if you feel like, you know, that doesn't, that's not good because it's a nose shadow, or that's not good because it's a lid shadow, and that's through an artifact. So there's the rings themselves that you can literally go in and modify whatever you want to remove it. And then this is an interpolated map. And it shows you literally what data was put into the map. So in other words, it shows you what the computers just kind of said, OK, well, it's doing this, and that's what we're weight averaging as it. And that's what it, it would look like. We really didn't get good enough image, but that's what it looked like. And if you say, well, God, that's not, that doesn't make sense to me, you can either take another map or you can, you know, keep it. Here's a hyperopic refractive surgery. One of the things that we've worked on since this picture is this right here. We, we put enough people into the neural net now that we can tell whether that's really a, um, you know, real problem or, or it's a hyperopic refractive surgery. And this, this reading that it's keratoconus suspect, that's what I didn't like about the Humphrey. We still have a Humphrey, but it overread with these maps that anybody that had any type of hyperopic refractive treatment, they were automatic keratoconus. And it read any post-operative refractive errors in abnormal cornea. And here's the old uh, version, what's called the Pathfinder. So all this is a, just a post-operative patient on a Humphrey, and it, it, it'll continue to read sub-keratoconus and clinical sub-keratoconus. And then um, here's the wavelight neural net. Um, so this is a wave light topographer analyzer, and primarily, again, I think this overreads whether it's postcranial surgery severely deformed, and I just don't think it's in the same ballpark as you got Smolik and Kleist now working on the neural nets, and we're constantly putting more and more data of abnormals. So the more abnormals you have into the box, the better it's going to read it for you. And you know, yeah, there's going to always be that perfect case where you put the guy out there and you go, God, is that really keratoconus or not? But then that's something you can put in your chart and you can look at the patient and you can say, okay, you're a keratoconus suspect, okay? I don't think I should operate on you. Or it's an abnormal cornea and these are the weight average and we should go ahead and do a PRK as opposed to a LASIK. So we are still, we're, we're still, I call us beta sites still that are collecting the data and every now and then we'll take like 6,000 eyes or whatever dump them, send them to Mike Smolik, and then Smolik will put them into the neural net just to keep retraining that neural net and giving it more and more accuracy. Now, a lot of people think that this is kind of a, a, a diagnostic system that may not have any applicability in my practice, 